Toronto's light favorites, 98.1 CHFI, and relax with us online at chfi.com. From the heart of the city, this is the soundtrack to the moon and the sun. Good evening, I'm Don Jackson. According to the ancients, March 28th was believed to be the date of the creation of the moon and the sun. Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote, The man who has seen the rising moon break out of the clouds at midnight has been present like an archangel at the creation of light and of the world. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Jim Cuddy and Pull Me Through and Train with the Drops of Jupiter. Who can tell the ages of the moon? Who can tell the place where the sun rests? An excerpt from a Druid song circa 600 BC in Ireland. In the introduction to the book Sky Gods, The Sun and Moon in Art and Myth, published in 1974 by Universe Books in New York, the author Catherine Komarov writes, and I quote, Imagine. It is a morning just like any other morning. You wake up as usual, but today you sense that something is very different. The sun is not up with you. You think that you might still be half asleep and dreaming, but you are completely awake and it is indeed morning, although it is as dark as midnight. There isn't even a moon. All over the world, animals scurry about nervously, aware that something is very wrong. Suddenly you realize how important the sun is and how much we take it for granted. But what do we really know about it? What exactly is the sun? What is the moon? Where do they come from? Where do they go? Why does the moon change its shape? Are they even real? Ever since the beginning of time, man has wondered about the meaning and behavior of the sun and the moon. He has carefully observed their cycles and realized their importance for his own survival. The close contact with nature that ancient man enjoyed made him more conscious of their presence. Whether he lived in a place constantly warmed by the sun or in a bitter cold world where the sun seemed far away. Ancient men tried to explain the meaning of this mysterious phenomena in stories closely related to their own lives and their religious beliefs. The Hindu people of India said that the sun was a man with four arms in a golden chariot. The Egyptians said that the sun was a great watchful eye. Unquote. She goes on to tell us about a myth of the native North Americans that the moon was a great ball of light tossed into the sky by a clever creature called Raven. She also tells us that the inhabitants of the far north, and again I quote, believed that the moon was a powerful hunter who often stood in front of his igloo. She goes on to write, these stories called myths are handed down from generation to generation and we celebrate the great mystery of life. They are loved because of their beauty and power and also for what they tell us about people of other cultures. Unquote. The sun and the moon tonight, some fanciful tales and some very real observations by people who were there on the moon with lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers five for fighting with the riddle. This is one of Aesop's fables. It's called the wind and the sun. 
This one translation begins. The wind and the sun were disputing which was the stronger. Suddenly, they saw a traveler coming down the road, and the sun said, I see a way to decide our dispute. Whichever of us can cause the traveler to take off his cloak shall be regarded as the stronger. You begin. So the sun retired behind a cloud, and the wind began to blow as hard as it could upon the traveler. But the harder he blew, the more closely did the traveler wrap his cloak around him, till at last the wind had to give up in despair. Then the sun came out and shone in all his glory upon the traveler, who soon found it too hot to walk with his cloak on. There's always a moral to Aesop's fables. Kindness affects more than severity. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Celine Dion, in some small way, and Paul Anka with Anthea Anka, and Do I Love You. My companion writing is called Lights Out and bears little or no resemblance to a classic old-time radio program. Log on to the CHFI website, follow the links on the homepage to my blog at chfi.com. And Lovers and Other Strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is Lovers and Other Strangers on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Light Favorites, 98.1 CHFI. And relax with us online at chfi.com. And welcome back to Lovers and Other Strangers, now a blog as well at chfi.com. I'm Don Jackson. Again, I return to the book Sky Gods, The Sun and Moon in Art and Myth by Catherine Komaroff, published in 1974 by Universe Books in New York City for one Egyptian myth about the sun. She writes, and I quote, In the ancient capital of Heliopolis, in the fertile region of the Nile Delta, there were many gods. One of the most important was Ra, the sun, at high noon. Before Ra was born, the world was very dark and cold, but his birth brought light to the world. Ra first appeared on Earth as a scarab beetle, which emerged from a beautiful lotus flower. Later, the beetle changed itself into a little boy, and when this boy wept, his tears became mankind. Ra started each morning as a child. He stepped into his solar boat and started his journey across the sky, which resembled a great starry ocean. When he reached the middle of the sky, he was at the height of his strength, a full-grown man. But by late afternoon, he was exhausted, and it was a weak old man that left his solar ship and climbed into the night boat for his dangerous journey through the twelve provinces of the underworld. While he was out of the sky, the world was in darkness. The underworld, a dark reflection of the heavens, was the place of the dead. Monstrous creatures and unfriendly spirits live there. Unquote. That's one of the ancient myths about the sun. Lovers and other strangers. From 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers. Neil Young under a harvest moon and sting in fields of gold and the sun in his jealous sky. There's been talk that NASA plans a return, manned mission to the moon by 2020. 
I think they would need to go back to our celestial neighbor if they ever plan a manned mission to Mars. So what is the lunar dust on the surface of the moon really like? Apparently some of the astronauts brought some of that dust on their spacesuits, boots I guess, back into their lunar lander. We've seen the pictures of them walking on the surface, their footprints left behind in it. In the Friday, May 18th, 07 issue of the Globe and Mail Social Studies column was this description of moon dust, and I quote, The dust feels like snow, smells like gunpowder, and doesn't taste too bad. Quote, the moon is a lonely place, no atmosphere, no life. The sun, of course, is a star that is close enough to the earth to provide just the right conditions for life here. Our star has enough fuel to keep its fires burning for another 7.7 .7 billion years or so. Before that happens, though, our planet will become too hot to support any kind of life in about 5.7 billion years. Humankind will have to have found another home long before that. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Elton John's Rocket Man. Which brings me back to my original quote that I used to begin the hour, Emerson suggesting the man who has seen the rising moon break out of the clouds at midnight has been present like an archangel at the creation of light and of the world. Consider this comment from the late astronomer Carl Sagan. In the book, The Varieties of Scientific Experience, a personal view of the search for God. He said, and I quote, by far the best way I know of to engage the religious sensibility, the sense of awe, is to look up on a clear night. Lovers and other strangers, from 98.1 CHFI. Enya, from the album Watermark. This is called Storms in Africa. Stay tuned. Lovers and Other Strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Passion set to words and music. Lovers and Other Strangers on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's Light Favorites, 98.1 CHFI, and relax with us online at chfi.com. We're in the heart of Toronto, around the world on the internet, and now a blog as well at chfi.com. My companion writing is called Lights Out. There is little or no resemblance to a classic old-time radio program. Log on to the CHFI website, follow the links on the homepage to my blog at chfi.com. Good evening once again, I'm Don Jackson. When the lights go out during a power failure, we're momentarily startled. When the power doesn't return until some time has passed, we realize how much we rely on it. It's romantic at, f at first as we light candles, but as those candles burn down, you start to feel a little nervous. 
will it ever come back? Lights out. This hour with lovers and other strangers. From 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers. Sarah McLaughlin with Blackbird and Benny King. And stand by me. This is a, an African myth. Again from Sky Gods. The Sun and Moon in Art and Myth by Catherine Komarov, published in 1974 by Universe Books in New York City. In the beginning, the world was never really dark or cold. The sun shone during the day, and the moon gave twilight to the night. One day, God asked the bat to carry a covered basket filled with darkness to the moon. He said that the bat should not ask why, but should just do as he was told. Later, God himself would go to the moon to explain what to do with the basket. On his way, however, the bat became hungry and tired, and he stopped. He put the basket down and ventured off to look for food. While he was gone, some animals found the basket sitting by the side of the road. They were overcome with curiosity and opened the basket, letting darkness escape throughout the world. As soon as he saw the darkness, the bat realized at once that he was responsible. In an effort to be forgiven for his grave mistake, he now sleeps during the day and flies madly around at night trying to catch darkness and deliver it to the moon. But he has never succeeded. And because he did not realize the importance of his God-given task, darkness still covers the whole world. Catherine Komarov, from the book Sky Gods, published in 1974. Lovers and Author Strangers from 98.1 CHFI Lovers and Other Strangers Haley sails with what you want and seals Kiss from a Rose from the first Batman movie. Tomorrow night, Toronto will be going dark for an hour and it will have nothing to do with a bat. But you may see a bat earlier than usual. It is Earth Hour. People around the world will be turning off their lights not only to conserve power, but to bring attention to the subject of global climate change. You might have heard that ice fields in Greenland and Antarctica are melting and sometimes breaking off into huge icebergs. If you thought the small one that did in the Titanic was destructive, you can just imagine what could happen with ones that resemble small U.S. states in size. It might be difficult to, to wrap our minds around global warming, global climate change after the kind of winter we've just come through, but the evidence for climate change is overwhelming. The first Earth Hour was held on March 31st, 2007 in Sydney, Australia. It was a resounding success. 2,100 businesses and more than 2 million people extinguishing their lights for an hour. Some thoughts about being in the dark this hour. Psychiatrist Dr. Glenn Wilson gave us an idea why we might like to be in the dark. In an interview with the Daily Mail some time back, Dr. Glenn Wilson said there's good reason to believe that people's personalities do change around the time of the full moon, not because of any astronomical force, but because it creates the optimum lighting conditions for feeling carefree and mischievous, dim enough to hide blemishes and reduce inhibitions, but not so dark that we fumble and stumble. 
both lovers and other strangers. From 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers. Blue Rodeo Bulletproof and Sarah Sleen. And Get Home. My companion writing is called Lights Out, bears little or no resemblance to a classic old-time radio program. Log on to the CHFI website, follow the links on the homepage to my blog at chfi.com. And Lovers and Other Strangers returns. I'm Don Jackson. Your life set to words and music, lovers and other strangers on 98.1 CHFI. Toronto's light favorites, 98.1 CHFI, and relax with us online at chfi.com. And welcome back to Lovers and Other Strangers, now a blog as well at chfi.com. I'm Don Jackson. According to Italian and U.S. researchers, and I quote, about two-thirds of the people in the world, 99% of the people in the continental United States and Europe never see a truly dark, starry sky. That from Astronomy Magazine and the October 16th, 01 issue of the Globe and Mail's Social Studies column. Do you remember the great blackout that enveloped almost all of the Northeast some years back? It's a scary time for all of us as we scrambled to adapt to living without power for a few days. Thank goodness it happened in summer so we didn't have to worry about keeping warm. It was difficult to gas up our cars. We worried about the food in our fridges and freezers going bad. We relied on our gas barbecues to cook and about running out of that fuel. Batteries were beginning to be scarce. We had to learn to drive without the aid of stoplights. There was an upside to it all, of course. We went outside after dark and looked up. We were able to see the stars. It was really like being out in the forest, miles away from any city and looking up at a star-filled sky. I would imagine some people got their first glimpse of how many stars there really are overhead. My family sat outside, watched satellites cross the sky, and we even saw a few shooting stars. That was the year when Mars was at its closest point to Earth. Not only did the moon light up the heavens, but we had a bright pinpoint of light beside it. Telescopes were brought out of storage rooms and set up on front lawns. For a brief time, we learned not to fear the dark, but to revel in it. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Sheriff, when I'm with you and Van Morrison's Moon Dance. This is an excerpt from the July 5th, 04 issue of the Globe and Mail's Social Studies column, and I quote, Light pollution has increased by about 10% a year in the past 30 years, to the point where the urban night is essentially just a, a dilution of the day. Not only has this banished the stars and played havoc with the ecology of night creatures, it also seems to have affected human health. Unquote. I featured a myth about the bat to begin this hour. It is a creature that you might see early during Earth hour tomorrow night between 8 and 9 p.m. with the lights of the city entirely off or at least mostly dim. The lights have never really affected the nocturnal creatures that live alongside humans. I've told you in the past that I live near a ravine, home to all manner of creatures. Our streets are lit up with street lights, our homes have lights over driveways, those that illuminate the path right up to the front door. The way we have chosen to light up the dark doesn't seem to have affected their nightly wanderings. I've had a fox around twice this month a pair of raccoons and a rabbit all seem little disturbed with the night lights in the community. 
yesterday's Toronto Star was a whole Earth Hour section of the newspaper. In one article, it was pointed out that most mammals are nocturnal, with the exception of squirrels and humans. It's true when you stop to think about it. I've always functioned better at night. It's why I like doing this radio show when I do. Tomorrow night, when the lights are turned off, don't be surprised if you see some creatures that normally prowl late at night, somewhat confused and active earlier than usual. They may feel more at ease, though once the lights return at 9 p.m. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. Lovers and other strangers, Crosby, Stills, Nash & Young, in our house. all manner of night creatures. I forgot to mention the neighborhood cats. They're always on the prowl after dark. Take a cruise. While you're out in the middle of the ocean, you will see stars like you will never see here in the city. During the time of the blackout, we patiently awaited the return of the dawn for the light to return to the world. Chet Raymo in the Boston Globe reminded me of that time when he wrote, and I quote, There is no optical phenomena visible at dawn that cannot also be seen at sunset. But our eyes are more completely rested in the morning and adapted to darkness. And so we are more sensitive to tints and hues. There is something else. A psychological sense of waking up in a technicolor Oz. We see things with the wide eyes of morning that we'd be oblivious to at the end of the day. The tiny white moth, for example, perched on a blade of grass, spreading its wings to the east in anticipation of the rising sun. Quote Chet Ramo in the Boston Globe. Tomorrow night's Earth Hour won't be long enough to give you an appreciation for the true dark night. But it is a start. Lovers and other strangers from 98.1 CHFI. That concludes another chapter of Lovers and Other Strangers. Lovers and Other Strangers returns long after the sun sets. Good night, sweet dreams. I'm Don Jackson. Romance, set to words and music, Lovers and Other Strangers, on 98.1 CHFI.